If you want to deliver outstanding customer service, there are two skills that you'll need. And there's a skill, an attribute, or a personal characteristic that's a little bit special, but that's where the outstanding comes from in delivering outstanding customer service. Let's look at the two basic skills to begin with. The first thing you're definitely going to need is really good product or service knowledge or a combination of the two. You can get away, um, you, you can't get away too long with fluffing your way through a description of a product or service. Customers will just see through it. The second thing you need is some really good communication skills. And perhaps surprisingly, the most important skill there would be a really good sense of listening. But the third skill, attribute or personal characteristic is this whole thing about having genuine care and empathy with the customers that you're delivering customer service to. Most companies would have training courses on products and services and good communication skills, but most lack that little piece there on genuine care and empathy. And these are the two um, examples of training sessions that I've actually used over the years to help people to really put themselves in the shoes of the customer. And the first one is from a restaurant many years ago. And I say training sessions, it's really not a training session, it's just a very short training activity. So this restaurant was not very nice to walk into. It was very bright outside. It had smoke glass doors, you couldn't see inside. And unfortunately, when you opened the door, a buzzer went off and the 60 people that were sitting in the restaurant heard the buzzer, looked up to see who was coming in, and you just ended up right in the middle of all of that. So it wasn't a very pleasant experience. And the thing that I did to get the staff to understand how the customer was feeling in that moment was just to put them in the moment. So I simply got them to walk into the place on a busy night. And with some coaching and supervision afterwards, we never had a situation where a customer walked into those premises ever again and was ignored because the people understood, the staff understood how they felt in that moment. The second example that I've got is a little bit more up to date and um, this involves a business that we run in Beerwar, which is uh, we, we make and uh, deliver a whole range of pre-made meals. Now most people ring their orders in and I can just tell you that people that are in their 90s are often not very comfortable on the phone. They just don't like using the phone. They perhaps weren't, the phone wasn't part of life that they've experienced most of their life. So I had a challenge before me and I was trying to find a way of making the people in my office understand how the customers were feeling when they were ringing their orders in. So after a little bit of thought and, and brainstorming and those sorts of things, we came up with this solution. I actually asked the people in the office, what phone calls would their partners make about product or services in their lives that they use? And the thing that came up was car tires. They never ordered car tires. It was always their partners that did that. So I actually got them to ring three different companies and ask for a replacement set of car tires. And they did it completely uh, without any preparation, so they didn't know what they were going to ask. Yeah, get asked. We didn't record the calls, because of course that's not legal. Um, but it was very surprising, the results. You know, you'd get somebody going right from the, you know, really grim type of phone call where it was, look, if you haven't got the bloody number, you know, you need to give me a ring back with the number, call me back when you've got it. And they were, of course, referring to the number on the tire. All the way through to people that were very gentle and say, OK, if you grab your phone, you'll find the number on the tire wall, probably towards the top left. Or, you know, they give them some sort of an indication of what to look for. Take a photograph, bring it back to me. And once we've got that number, we can explore some options that might be suitable for you. And it transformed the way that they answered the phone to the customers that were ringing in from that point forward because again they completely understood how their approach could potentially make people feel. So that's two techniques that I've actually used to help people to um, feel the pain or anguish or uncomfortableness that a customer would feel in a variety of situations. 
So just before I sign off, I was wondering whether I could ask you a question and whether you'd prop, pop a comment or two below for me. And the question is, what is it about customer service that tends to repeatedly really annoy you or irritate you or really cheese you off? Or something that you think organisations could just wipe out and do much better in terms of customer service. I'm putting a short course together and I would love to have your thoughts on that so that I could do some talking around those points.